Yo, what is up my Nakama? My name is Daniel and I'm a current second year medical student and currently we're on our second portion of our endocrine slash reproductive block. So in this block we're going to learn about reproductive health and pathology. So it'll be an interesting block and a good way to end my basically preclinical years before I start my step one dedicated period. So basically my last exam for this unit is going to be like December 20th and from that point on it's just grind time, just studying, studying for step one. Um, so before all of that starts, I just want to get out a few more videos because I'll probably have to pause on YouTube for a bit. But I want to take you through this current week um, of my medical school studies and um, hopefully you enjoy following along and maybe learn a little bit about what it's like being a medical student and how I study um, and how I try and balance, you know, studying with like fitness and health and mental health. So yeah, hope you enjoy. Let's have a great week. Let's get started. Yay, my succulent is growing more and more. I give it enough light, I water it and feed it, and hopefully it will become the best succulent this world has ever seen. Okay, so I'm in the middle of one of my study breaks right now, and I just finished a UWorld practice test. I got a 65%, which is okay. I mean, I'd like to do a lot better, but right now I'm trying to do like full block 40 question practice tests with multiple systems and multiple disciplines um, and test myself that way to like really mimic the step one exam and you know it's better to miss questions now than in the actual exam and when i do miss a question i make sure to like make an anki card from it and really go over why i missed the question and why the other answers uh, were not correct because not only is the correct answer valuable information if you missed it but knowing why the other answers are incorrect and maybe even modifying the initial question to make it so that the other answers would fit is like a great way to learn from practice questions in my opinion um, so that you can approach these types of subjects from multiple angles um, but yeah i'm probably going to do another practice test you know the grind is getting real um, and then i'm going to do my workout so see you then <laughs> All right, so here we got my garb of the day. Got my Mickey Mouse sweatshirt, my sweatpants, I'm ready to study. One of the best things about online medical school is that you can dress like a hobo and still be set up for success. <laughs> Alright, let's go study. <laughs> are in support of meal prepping um, and attending my SGA meeting at the same time. An idea. Oh, Hashtag multitasking. Ultra, multicultural day. Like, that would be great. Alright, so, it's lunchtime. I've been fairly productive this morning. I got all my Anki done. I did a lot of boards and beyond. Attended an SGA meeting. Meal prepped for the entire week. Now, I'm eating the fruits of my labor. <laughs> um, so, I pretty much finished my first block of studying, which I do from 8 to 12. And by the way, I intermittent fast, so I don't eat anything in the morning. And it fits my schedule well because I've just been doing it for so long, and I think there's a lot of health benefits to intermittent fasting. 
Um, but also from a timing standpoint, like um, I like to be really focused in the morning and start my work as early as possible. So like if I have to make breakfast and worry about cooking up some eggs and eating it, that just adds some more time in my morning. Um, and for me, I'm kind of the most focused in the morning. So that's why I just decide to like drink a coffee, have some water and then just skip breakfast and go straight into my studying. Um, and I've been doing that for like three years and it's worked well for me. Uh, but yeah, I'm just gonna eat my lunch now and then I'm gonna do my second round of studying, which is basically from one to five. I'm gonna take a quick walk outside because I always like to take a walk after lunch just to kind of reset and refresh myself. Um, and then for the rest of the day, I don't work out on Tuesdays. I usually do some sort of cardio and mobility training, which I'll show you guys later in the video. All right, I'll see you then. All right, something came in the mail. I have no idea what it is. Peppermint candy cane pour over set? Oh! <gasps> Christina must have gotten me this. Matcha iced tea. Oh, this is from Copper Cow Coffee. Oh my god. These pour over things are amazing. This is the pumpkin spice one. It's like Vietnamese coffee. <gasps> wow. Candy cane flavor. And another pumpkin spice. Oh my god. An entire packet of these pour over things. This is the best gift ever. Thank you so much, Christina. <laughs> oh, this is gonna get me through dedicated. I'm so excited. Okay, so I just finished up my first focus block of studying in the morning. Um, today is Wednesday, by the way. Uh, made a nice pour over coffee and, you know, just did my Anki, a few practice questions. And then I got a little bit distracted, I'm not going to lie, because of something really important. Um, it usually takes a huge event of sorts to distract me from my focus block. But what it was, was the NVIDIA 3080s. I don't know if I pronounced NVIDIA, NVIDIA. <laughs> Um, the 3080 RTXs and the 3060 Ti's dropped like at the same time on Best Buy and on Newegg. And I freaking had it in my cart on Best Buy, but the locations, even though it was in my cart and ready to check out, it said there was like no available locations within 250 miles for pickup. Um, and then it did say it was available, but then the website crashed. So basically I didn't end up getting one, which really sucks because I want to upgrade my current graphics card, which is a 980, no, it's a 970 Ti. No, actually 980 Ti. I want to upgrade my 980 Ti, which is about five or six years old with either a 3080 or a 3060 Ti so I can make even more epic edits so that I can spin really fast and not have my computer lag at all. <laughs> okay, well now I'm gonna go eat lunch and then continue on with the rest of my day.
All right, so just got done with my first round of morning studying and I was actually extremely productive in my break. So I do Pomodoro intervals, 45 minutes on, 15 minutes off. And I even got like a whole YouTube video uploaded with a thumbnail and everything during those 15 minute breaks. Um, and then during the 45 minute um, study periods, I got all my Anki done. I reviewed all of last week's endocrinology lectures. Um, I kind of like the endocrinology unit a lot, actually. It kind of ties in everything really well, like all the other organ systems. And it's kind of interesting to know how certain hormone deficiencies or certain adenomas or carcinomas related to the endocrine system kind of affect you like physically and mentally. Um, and I like that there's like kind of like definitive treatment options, like whether it's surgical or something for hyper or hypothyroidism, like um, T4, or T3 supplementation, like a lot of the treatments are pretty definitive. And I feel like um, you can kind of help your patients manage their symptoms really well, like as an endocrinologist. Um, so pretty cool. And also my clinical skills coach is a pediatric endocrinologist, um, Dr. Hunter. She's awesome. She's one of my favorite. Well, I only have two CS coaches. Both of them are my favorite, of course, I'm kind of biased, but she was great. And she's also our block director for this entire course. So it's cool to have her both as a block director and as my clinical skills professor. And I'll probably be rotating with her at some point if I decide to do a rotation with um, pediatric endocrinology. Um, but also something else I wanted to mention that's kind of random, but I'm going to include in the description of this video is um, I'm pretty serious about like finances and stocks and stuff. And recently I've been getting into cryptocurrencies um, within the past couple months. Um, and there's a cryptocurrency called Ripple XRP, which I think is on the rise. Um, especially they're having um, this thing called a fork where there's a new token coming out. It's called Spark. And for every one XRP that you own, basically you're going to get one Spark if you hold your XRP in a valid exchange. Um, so I'm pretty big into this and I might make another video talking about like my investments and how I handle all of that in medical school. Um, but I'm going to post a link below with my Voyager um, referral code. And basically if you use that referral code, both you and me can get $25 worth of Bitcoin. Uh, which is awesome because I'm a poor medical student, but I'm also serious about investments and I just want to see that money grow, you know, because I mean, finances and stuff, I, I think they're pretty important and it's something that we don't often talk about, especially as physicians, but you know, we got a lot of debt. We're paying a lot to go to medical school. So, you know, anything I can do to make a little extra cash or have some uh, nice investments on the side, I'm all for. Um, so yeah, feel free to use that link in the description. I'll paste my code there. Um, and it'll help both of us out if you use it. Okay, so we just got done with a mandatory lecture today, and it was actually a super important lecture that they just started integrating into our curriculum, which I think should be in almost every medical school curriculum because it affects so many people, but it's basically our race and medicine lecture series. And we talk about certain health disparities that exist with certain populations in our community that affect them medically. And the problem, it's, it's really serious. Like we were learning today about, um, black women facing higher pregnancy related mortalities and deaths as well as um, their infants and children um, and it it goes beyond just kind of the regular implicit biases that some physicians have like although sometimes an implicit bias of a physician can directly result in a severe consequence in terms of the medical care of some of these patients a lot of the times it's more so related to just the overall systemic racism that exists in our community that leads to these poor health outcomes of minority um, women in terms of pregnancy related deaths compared to like white women, for example. 
And it's, it's a really serious issue because, I mean, as physicians, we try and learn and try and take care of the patient with the best of our ability. And seeing these statistics is just kind of horrifying a little bit that in our country that we spend so much healthcare dollars and we spend so much time um, compared to any other country investing in our healthcare that we still have these issues. And it's something that we need to address, I think, holistically, not just medically, because we can provide good medical care, um, but a lot of the times it goes beyond that. Um, it goes to you know how certain people are affected in the community and their access to like basic resources like food and stuff. And all of this combined, I think, just <clears throat> creates these disparities in health outcomes. And it's definitely something that we need to address and I'm glad we're learning about it as physicians. So hopefully the new generation of physicians, including my class and the years below me, can really take into consideration these issues so that in the future we can decrease these disparities in health outcomes and hopefully provide just the best care for all of our patients. I mean, because one of the worst things if you think about is like a pregnancy related um, death, you know, b both for the mother and the child and, and the entire family. It's just an awful situation overall. So I just hope that, you know, in the future, these numbers go down. And personally, I'm going to try my best to address these issues and to provide the best care that I personally can. You know, it shouldn't matter what the color of your skin is. As physicians, we should treat everyone equally and provide the best care we can for every single patient that we encounter. This stuff is amazing ever since I found out about it. Slingshot coffee, citrus vanilla cream soda with caffeine in it. So good. I generally have this about two times a week, you know, when I'm in that mid afternoon slump and I gotta do another U World block. I just, I need a little boost, you know. <laughs> All right, well, I'm gonna go back to studying now and then I'll probably see you guys um, for my workout, which I'm gonna start at around 5 p.m. Let's go. Okay, so I'm about to go to bed and I kind of stayed up a little bit late playing Valorant, um, which I probably shouldn't do. And I'm definitely gonna delete before I start my dedicated step one studying. Um, but anyways, I hope you enjoyed this week in the life of a medical student video. Um, it was pretty fun. I mean, well, actually not too fun because <laughs> I had to quarantine um, basically for the entire week. Well, I kind of self quarantined uh, just to be safe because I did travel back home for Thanksgiving. so. I didn't want to have any extra contact once I got back um, to medical school here. Um, but yeah, you know, stay strong, stay healthy, you know, keep on wearing masks, um, just stay safe and all that good stuff. And as always, date bayo.